motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. All right. Greetings and peace, family. Welcome to another episode of thequeendome.com. Today's episode, we're going to talk about your brain. Yes, we're going to talk about that brain of yours. So let's uh, take a couple of deep breaths here and get into the present moment. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. I love the breath. I'm going to actually uh, upload some uh, new videos. I've been practicing some new pranayamas, which is uh, just a Sanskrit word for breath work. I'm going to upload some of those to the YouTube channel. So if you're not on my YouTube channel or not a subscriber, I highly recommend that you subscribe. If you go to the link, thequeendome.com, if you're on a laptop, look to the right, click the YouTube picture. If you're on a cell phone, then scroll down to the bottom and click the YouTube picture and it will uh, subscribe you to the channel. All right, so um, today's episode, we're going to talk about um, this article that came across my desk from Fast Company. I thought it was an interesting article falls in line with uh, some of the things that we've been talking about here on the past few episodes. Um, the subtitle is How to Be a Success at Everything. And title is Your Brain Has Limits. Here are some simple ways to extend your mind according to science. Now right out the gate, um, I think the title is flawed because your brain does not have limits. But anyway, we'll give them a pass. So this article uh, is acclaimed science writer Annie Murphy Paul says that in order to think the intelligent, informed, original thoughts we're capable of, we can't rely on the brain alone. Read on to learn how you, you can extend your mind. All right, so far so good. Annie Murphy Paul is an acclaimed science writer whose work has appeared in the New York Times, the Boston Globe, Scientific American, Time Magazine, and the Best American Science Writing. She is currently a fellow in New America's Learning Sciences Exchange. Below, Annie shares five key insights from her new book, The Extended Mind, The Power of Thinking Outside of the Brain. All right. Haven't gotten their book yet, but I felt like these five key points were um, pretty good for us to kind of chat about. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read each point, and then I'm gonna give my commentary uh, on on the point. So the the first point is thinking doesn't happen only in the brain. More than 20 years ago, two philosophers, Andy Clark and David Chalmers, wrote a journal article that opened with the question. Where does the mind stop and the rest of the world begin? Now that question would seem to have an obvious answer, right? The mind stop at the head. It contains within the skull. But Clark and Chalmers maintained that this assumption, as common as it is, is wrong. The mind, they said, takes elements from outside the head and draws them into the thinking process. These mental extensions allow us to think in ways our brains couldn't manage on their own. They call this phenomenon the extended mind. Now, I wholeheartedly agree with this first point 
because if you look at your mind or your brain, you have your conscious mind, which holds uh, 5% of, of your perception and how you are and how you behave and what you do. And then you have your subconscious mind or your subconscious brain that holds 95%. Now your conscious mind is in fact in your brain. It's, it's in your head. Your subconscious mind is everything below the neck. It's your body. Your subconscious mind is your body. Okay. So um, I can definitely resonate with her saying thinking doesn't happen only in the brain because your body, you know, we're made up of over 37 trillion some odd cells and each of those cells have their own brain have their own internal organs and everything right so yeah absolutely your body is your subconscious mind or your subconscious brain all right let's go to the next point here and i will put a link to this article in the show notes on my blog and you'll see that in the uh, video description okay next point number two we extend the mind with the body, just as I was talking about. We in the West are used to thinking of the mind and the body as separate, but a burgeoning field called embodied cognition is demonstrating that thinking is actually a full body experience. This is true in a few different ways. First, the internal sensations of the body, our gut feelings, guide our perceptions and our reactions. When we learn to tune into these inner signals, we can use them to make sounder decisions and even to connect more effectively with other people. Second, the movements of our bodies make affect, may affect the way we think. I think they made a typo there. We've come to believe that serious thinking entails sitting still, but research shows that moving, walking, exercising, acting things out enhances our mental processes in ways that don't happen when we're sitting down. Third, a specific kind of movement, the gestures we make with our hands, as I'm doing right now, extends our thinking by capturing and expressing concepts that we can't yet put into words. Research shows that our most advanced, most cutting edge ideas often show up first in the motions of our hands, motions that we then use to inform and construct a verbal account of what we're thinking. Yeah, this is spot on. And in fact, I'm going to go a little esoteric with you in this part where it says, first, the internal sensations of the body, our gut feelings. That gut feeling, it comes from your solar plexus um, chakra. That's your, what's that, six, seven, six, your fifth chakra right below the heart. So that comes from, from that area, you know, like that's why it's called gut feeling because it comes from that that portion you know of your abdomen and that's um the sacral or i'm sorry solar plexus uh chakra and that uh endocrine uh system is the um is the uh adrenaline gr glands so you know when you have a gut feeling that's a chemical release released from the brain through the endocrine gr gland the adrenal glands and that's your uh sacral chakra so that's that's a real thing Okay, that's a real thing. And then it says here, when we learn to tune into these inner signals, what are they talking about, inner signals? Well, you have seven main chakra centers. You know, when they're open and unclogged and unblocked, you get all different types of signals because you're open. You're, 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 you're clear. Your channel is clear. So you can receive communication and transmission. That's exactly what that's talking about. Um. And then also another point here in this portion where they said, you know, just sitting still, uh, serious thinking is not just about sitting still, but research shows that moving, walking, exercising, acting also enhances the mental process. That's true as well, because you have to look at how you get energy flowing. You know, we're like, uh, we're, we're energy beings, right? Science has proven this time and time again. People are just now coming into this realization and capturing this information and starting to use this energy that we have. You know, we have an unlimited, infinite supply. So when you start exercising and moving and walking, your energy is starting to flow. 
you know, you can, you can have a bad day. Somebody just pissed you off. You can go take a walk outside, you know, in nature. And, you know, 20 minutes later, you're feeling on top of the world, right? Because you've gotten your, you've gotten your energy flowing, you're opening up your channels and so forth. So yeah, that's, that's a uh, spot on. I like that. I like that point. All right. A couple of more here. Uh, number three, we can also extend our minds with physical space. It's common in our culture to compare the brain to a computer, but this is a deeply flawed analogy. A laptop operates the same, whether it's open on a desk, in an office, or on a bench in a park. But human brains aren't like that. They are exquisitely sensitive to context. One of the most fertile and fruitful places to think, to think with is nature. Hmm, I just said that. Yeah, nature. That's because our eons of evolution, our brains were tuned to the kind of sensory information available in the natural world. Spending time in a hard edge, highly designed, built environment drains our mental resources, while spending time in nature actually replenishes them. We can also deliberately arrange the interior spaces we occupy in ways that extend our thinking. Research shows that it's especially important that we feel a sense of control and ownership over the space in which we do our learning or working. It's also important to incorporate into these spaces cues of identity, that is, objects or symbols of who you are, what you're doing in that space, and also cues of belonging, objects or symbols that represent your membership in a group that's meaning, meaningful to you. All right. Um, this portion here, love it, absolutely on point. If you get in nature, you get back to your nature. <laughs> in fact, um, I'm reading a book right now, and I'm trying to grab it. Give me a second. Here it is. All right. So I'm reading this book right now. It's called Earthing, The Most Important Health Discovery Ever. The author is Clinton Ober, Stephen Sinatra, and Martin Zucker. But if you go to Amazon and you put in Earthing, this is a great book. And it's uh, basically backing the science behind Earthing. Now, what is Earthing? Earthing is being in nature, being around a body of water, being in some energy vortex, a mountain, or so forth, and connecting with the Earth. When I say connecting with the Earth, taking your shoes off, grounding yourself in the grass, or grounding yourself in the energy vortex, laying in the grass, laying on the mountain, and getting those negative uh, ions that are coming from the Earth's surface that gives you all of this expanded energy. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's free. You don't have to go to a chiropractor and get adjusted. Just go out in nature, bare, bare feet. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Again, we're just coming back into this knowledge. This knowledge has always been here for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. Ancient Kemet, uh, modern day Egypt, uh, the Atlantean people, the uh, ancient um, Egyptians, they knew this. They absolutely knew this. They knew about energy cultivation. They knew about using the resources in the atmosphere, the energy that permeates this planet. And that's how they built the monuments and, and the pyramids and all of these different structures um, that have never ever been able to be uh, duplicated because they were tapped in. They were tapped in. All right, let's go to number, key number four here. We can extend our minds with the social interactions we have with other people. So often we assume that real thinking, serious thinking is done alone, bent over a book or a notepad. But in fact, humans think best when they are interacting with others. Social activities like debating, storytelling, and teaching active mental processes that remain dormant when we're by ourselves. In fact, we can structure our interactions with others in the right way. We can actually engage in a kind of group mind, a collective entity that is more intelligent than any one of its members. Now, I have my thoughts on this uh, because I am a loner and I am a person that loves my own company. And I find 
the things that I tend to want to talk about are not necessarily mainstream. There's a small pocket of people that think like me. So I don't necessarily agree with this. I don't disagree with it. I'm just not, it's just not resonating with me like that. Because when you talk about group thinking, the group thinking that humanity is displaying right now has humanity in the space where we are right now. And that's not a good look. So I don't necessarily vibe with group thinking. I vibe with um, individual thinking and um, I vibe with uh, independent thinking, you know? And if it so happens that, you know, you come to a realization that there's a group of people that think like you, then that's one thing. But just to be spoon fed a program, which, you know, we have been for, for decades, um, I mean, not even decades, for, for hundreds of years, you know, since, since um, like the country, uh, United States Corporation was, was even built. So I don't necessarily agree with just going along just because everybody else is going down a certain track. I believe in individual thinking. I believe in independent thinking. And I believe that you should come up with your own conclusions about everything in your life. So that's just me. All right, the fifth point is the naked brain, the unextended brain is not that powerful. We hear a lot about how amazing the brain is, but the lesser known scientific story from the past 20 years is how much researchers have learned about the brain's limits. These limits are not a matter of individual differences in intelligence. They are common to all our brains. They're a product of the brain's status as a biological organ. One of the evolved to do things that are very different from what we ask of it in our complex, knowledge-centric modern world. Drawing on the resources of the extended mind allows the brain to overachieve, to do more than would be possible on its own. In fact, we can think of experts among us as those people who have mastered the art of thinking outside of the brain. Research shows that top performers don't do it all in their heads. They achieve their superior results by integrating internal and external resources. When we intentionally cultivate the capacity to think outside the brain, a new world of possibility opens up. We gain access to reserves of intuition, memory, attention, and motivation that are not available to the naked brain. In order to think the intelligent, informed, original thoughts we're capable of, we can't rely on the brain alone. We have to think outside of the brain. Now, again, that's spot on. And that's just going back to uh, opening up your, your uh, seven main chakra energy centers, letting the energy flow. Once you have that crown chakra open, which is you know, at the upper region of your head, now you're connected to infinite intelligence. So you're no longer just relying on your own brain. You're relying on the divine, you know, some call God, right? And that's the place that you want to be, in my opinion, if you really want to uh, upgrade um, your human avatar body. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed that uh, article. Enjoyed going through that again with you. And I was just thumbing through this book here. Yeah, but again, the book, if you guys are interested in that, it's called Earthing. And you can get it on Amazon. That's what I did. But, you know, if you just want to try it, just try it out. Just go lay in your grass for about 30 minutes. Go, if you got a mountain around you, a creek, a body of water, a beach, go take your shoes off about 30 minutes and get one with nature. When you get one with nature, you get one with God. That's the best place to be in. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the show. Again, I will put the uh, link to this article in the show notes on the blog. All of that will be in the video description if you're watching the video. If you're um, just listening to the podcast, then look in the show notes and you'll see the links and so forth. So have yourself a beautiful day. I will see you or hear you or you will hear me tomorrow. Peace and unconditional love. Thank you for tuning in. Please like.
share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's N-O-B-S-C-L-O-S-E-R.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.